And that's how we start a video. <laughs>
evenly eight times all the way around. Typically turning the product, not our hand, we're gonna leave our hand in the same spot. So I'll grab that gun here in a second and you'll see that. We're gonna do this twice around. We're gonna make sure that we're laying down a good even coat of Cerakote, make sure that it's laying down wet, not dry. And we're gonna do that by adjusting our gun to one full turn from closed on the fan and two full turns from closed on the material knob. That is that ratio that we really like to stick with, one to two. Now before we spray anything, we're gonna jump on this piece of paper behind me and we're gonna make sure that that is laying down exactly like we want on the paper. A nice white piece of paper in your spray booth is imperative uh, to make sure that you've got the proper amount of material coming out of the gun. So we'll approach that. We're gonna get this with a 45 degree angle every time. Now you're gonna to have to mind me uh, my shoulders are jacked up, so it looks a little funny, and you can see Dave doing this in a lot of the other videos. If you wanna go watch some of our other videos on the channel, and uh, you'll see all these basic techniques being applied all the way through all the jobs that we do. But you'll see that we start at a 45 degree angle up, and then we hit it with a 45 degree angle down, and then we keep on turning as we go. And every time we change directions, we're gonna turn that 1 8th, 1 8th, that's where we get our octagon. I'll spray this off. I'll actually do uh, these small parts. We'll probably adjust the gun a little bit and uh, then we'll go to these big parts and we'll talk you through that. I'm gonna get the gun ready now. Dave's got about 100 mLs of gold sprayed for all of these parts right here. Uh, and that's going to be cutting it. It's gonna be cutting it close. So we'll see what we come up with. All right, real quick before we get started here, uh, I'm gonna start with these small parts and these small areas of where we want to spray. We're gonna do that by adjusting our fan down about a quarter from closed and uh, the material about a half. Again, keeping that one to two ratio, I'm gonna mess with my air pressure. I'm gonna open it wide up, make sure that my pressure is right on my gauge, and then I'm gonna close that knob on the bottom until I hear it start to make a difference in the air in the gun. You'll see me holding it up to my ears. I'm then gonna throw my, uh, my AirPods in because I like to listen to music when I'm spraying. And we're gonna hit those with low pressure first just to make sure that we get into some of the hard to reach areas like the trigger guard and some other areas. After that is when I'll adjust to that one open on fan, two open, two full turns open on material, and we'll get a good even coat. We're gonna use that octagon. Now you'll notice this uh, receiver, the shotgun receiver behind me with the magazine tube. I'm gonna spray that in what I call a 10-sided octagon. Meaning I'm gonna use those same uh, techniques, those same basic techniques as I go around and I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to spray it twice on both wide sides. And that just adds one on each side to my octagon. Just a quick warning, the video is going to get really loud here in a second. You can see that I'm adjusting the fan open a quarter turn and the material a half. Uh, we're going to let it get real loud here so you can hear the airflow when I adjust this air knob here at the bottom. So you can see there at the end, uh, I've got the air pressure where I needed it. Hopefully you could hear when I was listening, uh, we let it get really loud there so that you could hear that air pressure go down. And then uh, you can see I actually, I adjusted the material knob open just a little bit. I wasn't quite getting the wet spray that I wanted on that paper. So we opened it up just a little bit more. Uh, sometimes that one to two ratio is not exactly right on. We're spraying here. These are just small parts. We're going to keep our, uh, our triggers down. So we've got constant airflow and then we're just going to get that um, kind of feather the material on. And we're going to do that with these small parts just to lay out a good uh, wet coating. We don't need to do a full spray all the way around. We're going to get in all the little cracks and crevices. And then you'll see I'll probably finish this up with one good spray up and down on each side of these parts. The biggest thing with these little ones is if you've got your air pressure turned down and you've got a small fan, you'll be able to get into all the little spots instead of having that material bounce back out at you. Something I want to point out that I would consider a uh, basic is the way we're holding these parts. Uh, you notice we're using this alligator clip 
piece that we get from Cerakote. And uh, here I'm moving that at that 45 degree angle I was talking about and getting that good final coat. I'm going to flip it around, do it again from the other direction. And that's where we're getting our, our true one mil thickness Cerakote spray. You can also see how quickly the material is ventilating outside of the booth. We get a lot of questions from people that want to start as a hobbyist, maybe turn this into a business about ventilation, and you should be clearing that Cerakote out of your area pretty quickly. Uh, we've got a pretty powerful fan. It's pulling through those filters. So that's something that you really need to pay attention to. You should not have any Cerakote build up on the walls. Uh, you don't want it to be building up in the air as you're spraying. It just it, it, It's going to ruin a lot of the parts that you have hanging there prepped and ready to go. Here we're going to do a final inspection, just make sure that we've got all the areas that we need to on these small parts, lots of little cracks and crevices. We're going to hang this. Uh, we started with this one because this is that, uh, it's got a lot of inside areas there. You can see I'm going to adjust my air a little bit and that's because I was getting a lot of blowback. Uh, you can see where it's bouncing out of the receiver itself back towards me. That's not something you'll be able to avoid on some of these parts, but you want to prevent that from happening as much as possible and you want your material to actually lay down inside there. Now we've got this turned again really low down. We're going to work from the hardest to reach spot outward and just make sure that we get good coating on the inside so that this piece is protected in the future from any corrosion or rust building up on the inside of these parts. We're going to set this aside. Uh, we're going to probably grab some other parts here and just kind of repeat that process all the way through. Uh, we'll speed this up for you so you don't have to watch the whole thing. All right, now that we've got all those little parts fanned out and all the hard to reach spots, we're gonna close our gun off and we're gonna start readjusting. You're gonna see here where I just work from a closed position on all those knobs. That top knob, the fan material, we're gonna open one full turn. The bottom one, which is material, we're gonna open two full turns. There's one, there's two. Uh, we're gonna make sure that our air is open. We're gonna get about five inches away and see how that lays out. Now here, it's super light, it's gonna spray on dry. So I opened my material a little bit more. I still don't like it. I did notice I had to add material when I did the low pressure spray with the small parts. So I'm gonna go over and adjust the pressure gauge in the booth. It was a little low. We're gonna bump that up a little bit so that I can get a little bit more airflow through and you'll see that'll actually lay out a little bit better. We're going to start here with our eight sided and 10 sided octagons. And uh, what I mean by that is here, this very first part, we're going to spray a 10 sided octagon. I'm going to pick uh, one side. I'm going to do 45 degrees down, 45 degrees up. I'm going to turn it an eighth of the way each time. Now, when I get to that side piece, that's where I'm going to add an extra spray on each side. So you'll actually see if we go down, up, down, up, uh, this will be 10 sprays will make one full rotation and that's why we call it a 10 sided octagon it's just a little bit easier that way don't forget your 45 degree angles very important to get from that side and now we're back to the beginning you'll see that I start the opposite direction we're gonna go from down to up and all the way around again and it's very important that you do nice and even coats. Uh, you, you'll notice that I start the spray slightly above the piece and I spray all the way past it. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit messy doing it that way and that's okay. You'll also notice that I keep that 45 degree angle. I don't let it uh, follow the piece, if you will. And that means that as you go, you'll, you'll start to straighten the gun out. So that's one good full coating all the way around twice and uh, that's going to leave just enough Cerakote that we've got a good protection layer and we're still going to be able to put some parts in there and let them move. We're going to do the same thing here on the barrel. Uh, this is a tall barrel so you'll see that I, with, especially with my shoulders, I start to really point the gun straight as I get upward. Uh, I'm not able to keep uh, my shoulders moving in a certain way but the, the goal here is to make sure to spray through the piece and all the way up to the top and start before you spray. And then same thing when you go back down, start your spray and move all the way down through the bottom of the piece. Very important that you good, get a good equal coating all the way through. You can see we're not hurrying here. We're laying out a good wet coat of Cerakote and we're not speeding through this process. Just nice and even all the way through. One thing I will say is hanging your parts. Uh, I did not particularly pick how to hang this part or how we plugged everything off and preparation for hanging is one of the big things. If you use something just a little bit thicker to hang instead of this thin wire that we chose on this one, you'll be able to turn your product quite a bit easier and that does help as you go. Here I 
I can't beat a dead horse enough, so we're just going to show you one more cylindrical object. We're going to get an octagon spray here, and that's where we've got that good 45 degree angle. We're starting the spray before the piece, spraying all the way through. Uh, and then we're going to alternate. We're going to go up, down, up, down, all the way around, turning it an eighth of a time. Eight turns gets one full rotation. We're going to start back there at the beginning and start from the opposite direction. So we're going to go starting from the downward position and just turn it all the way around again and keep going. Uh, you can see that we're going to go nice and slow and good even coatings. And, and this is the key to replicating your Cerakote work every time. Just make sure that you take your time and lay out as much Cerakote as is going to be required to actually protect that piece. Uh, you can see here I actually ran out of Cerakote. I figured it out. Uh, it starts uh, spitting and sputtering on me. Uh, I figured, figured it out there back when we were spraying the bottle. Uh, just like I said at the beginning of the video that 100 ml just simply wasn't going to be enough. So we kind of cut there, took a break, and uh, finished spraying. Got some more gold in there. I will say, and this is not a basic technique by any means, but we measure everything by weight, which really helps if you happen to run out of a spray mixture in the middle of a project, or if you need to come back and replicate something later for a customer, you, you will be able to get a much closer mix of your two-part catalyst and Cerakote mixture. Uh, so that's something that I would recommend getting to as soon as possible, but definitely not a necessity. Uh, here we're just going to finish off some of these small parts that we had sprayed previously. We fanned some color in there. We're going to go through, hit all of them at kind of uh, different angles, make sure that we get good coverage. Uh, we've got a couple different uh, rings and nuts in here. Uh, you can see that the nut that holds the action parts of that shotgun on, it's actually knurled. So we're going to hit it from a bunch of different directions to make sure that we get inside of all of those little areas and we get a good even coating. Uh, you'll have to get creative when it comes to some of these small parts and how to hold them, how to spray them, and how to make sure that they get completely covered and that's okay. The biggest thing that we want you to understand in this video is that octagon uh, where you're going to add uh, maybe one or two sprays to each side. Again, 10 and 12 sided octagons uh, for certain parts. We're going to show you some pistol parts here in a second. Dave's actually going to jump in here and start spraying some of this basic stuff and we'll go through and explain some of the process for some of these other parts. All right, so we're going to jump right into a uh, pistol frame, and we're going to try to show you guys all of what we would consider the basic firearms you're going to spray. And uh, we started there with some cylindrical items like a uh, action receiver or a barrel, and now we've got the pistol frame. Same thing, we've adjusted our fan and material down real low, uh, got our air spray low, and we're just getting a good wet spray in some of what we would call the hard to get spots. Uh, for Dave, he's going to spray inside of that trigger well and uh, there on the back strap where the beaver tail is. And uh, so depending on which frame it is, sometimes I'll get inside of the mag well as well. Uh, he's going to hang that aside. Probably going to pull slide down next, uh, if I would guess, because for pistol parts, those are the only two hard to reach. Yeah, so there we go. Got a pistol slide. He's going to get there where the guide rod goes, the barrel goes, and probably turn it and get just inside of the slide itself. Uh, we're going to be able to get a really good coating on this on the inside there. When we go through and do our octagon, uh, Dave prefers to not spray too much inside of there just because he's seen uh, a little bit too much Cerakote lay down before. So he's going to try to get a little bit better coating here. That way, uh, once he sprays his octagon uh, and he turns that piece and gets it all sprayed off, uh, the, the little bit of material that does get inside of there is going to provide your final protective coat. Uh, we're going to probably readjust, get our fan back open up here. Uh, now here, again, that famous 1 to 2 ratio uh, fan is going to be open one full turn, and material is going to be two full turns. It's going to start in one spot. And now this is what we call a 12-sided octagon. You can see he adds a couple different sprays to the side before he starts turning and getting the back strap in the front of the, or as you would call the front or bottom of the pistol frame here. He's going to turn it over, do the same thing. There's one, two, three for all four sprays before he's even turned that piece over again. Uh, there you saw it again. And uh, I'm going to call that a 12-sided octagon. Uh, the biggest thing here is spray all the way through, and even though that pistol grip juts out, we're calling that one full spray, and there we've got it again. Uh, just make sure that you get a good full even coat. 
we're going to pull that slide down. Uh, this is a, a slide's a cylindrical item, right? So we're going to go a typical eight-sided octagon. He starts there at the 45 degrees, and then Dave just sprays all the way around to the other 45. And the reason he does that is he does not spray full in on the bottom of the slide. You can see there he's going to start over, hit that 45 again, go all the way around. And uh, on those 45 degrees, you're laying enough Cerakote on the inside of there if you've laid enough down when you did that low spray earlier. Looks like I'm going to jump back in, get some small parts here. I'm adjusting both of these knobs to completely closed so that I can make the adjustment that I want. So there it looks like I did a half turn and a full turn. Again, one to two ratio. I'm going to listen for a little bit lower pressure. Uh, the biggest thing I'm adjusting this pressure down for on small parts is so that they don't flop around on me inside of here. You can see that, that uh, the way that this is hung, it does not. it's going to bounce around quite a bit if I hit it with high air pressure. I got to tell you guys for basic spray the biggest thing is making sure that you're laying down a good wet spray and that you're laying enough material down uh, knowing your gun is going to be the big part there that's one of the reasons that we recommend using the same gun we've got i think four or five awadas at this point and uh, you've seen them in some videos that they they all hang in the booth at the same time uh, they all adjust really similarly each gun's going to be slightly different but that's what the paper's for as far as getting uh, small parts sprayed, there's no octagon, there's no 12-sided octagons. Uh, you're just going to spray at it from a bunch of different directions and make sure that you're laying a good coat out without mushrooming anything and make sure that you get enough material. Uh, we look at it in a couple different lights. When we take it out of the booth and let it hang, there you can see that part's flopping around a little bit. And uh, that's why we keep that low pressure. We want to make sure that we get it coated well but we don't want it bouncing around on me either. If I were to spray that uh, from the bottom there and it bounced back up into my hand, it would ruin the spray. We'd have to dunk it and go again. So how you hang items is important. But uh, yeah, you're just looking for a good coating here and uh, we're not trying to do octagons or anything crazy. We just wanna make sure that we've got everything done out to where it needs to be. I'm gonna take it outside of the booth, let it air cure. And then after it air cures, we always take one last look. You've seen plenty of videos where we'll jump back in and, and hit a piece again if there was a little bit of light spray somewhere. And that's the biggest thing. Uh, you'll see Dave was even checking my work there in the background after I hung that up. And two sets of eyes is always going to be better than one. Uh, just sometimes you see different things differently. Sometimes you see them in different light. So it's always good to have a, somebody spraying with you, but it's not always possible. I understand that. At this point, I'd be surprised if you guys aren't going to get tired of hearing me say this, but uh, we are adjusting the gun again. We're going to get that one to two ratio, and it looks like Dave's probably going to do a one turn on his fan and a half turn on his material. He's laying out quite a bit of material there. That's good. Black, we want to get a good full coating. Uh, this is going to be the base coat of this firearm, and he's going to get the hard-to-get items. Uh, some of the hard-to-get items on a lower receiver mainly are going to be the inside of the receiver, the back end where your buffer tube or your receiver extension will go in. You can see he's going to get that first, and then underneath where the trigger guard is. So he'll probably work his way around and hit all the areas. The biggest thing is you're going to make sure that you don't have too much material laid down. Uh, because you're going to go through and hit this with full spray when you're done but you have to make sure that you're not dry spraying at the same time it's that happy medium and the reason that we use that uh, ratio between the fan and the material itself here he's grabbing that trigger area and probably going to hit the inside of the receiver next yeah so we're just going to go inside there just real nice and light uh, working from the inside out that means you're going to spray the the deeper areas and work your way out from there and uh, it when i spray a lower receiver i typically turn it around and hit that magwell area area as well. Uh, let's see if Dave does that here or if he's just going to hit it with the full spray. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, a lower receiver is going to be a 10-sided octagon. That's where we've got two, because it's flat, uh, we've got two full sprays on each side. So we're going to do an eighth of a turn uh, add and add one full spray on two sides. That's going to give us 10 sprays up and down all the way around. Upper receivers, you guys are probably catching the point at this point, and uh, I'm not going to try to repeat myself too much but we're getting the hard to get areas here before we move on uh, on an upper receiver there's just a couple areas you want to pay attention to the biggest thing is on the inside we want to get a good even coating but you'll also want to pay attention to the front and rear of the receiver so there Dave's gonna go through and just hit the front of it real nice and easy just because it is difficult to get into some of those cracks and crevices when we're doing a 45 degree and there he's gonna get around the 
uh, forward assist area, which is the, the rear end of the receiver. We're going to jump into the full spray on this AR lower and upper receiver. You'll probably see the handguard coming up here in a little bit as well. And what I mean by full spray is we've got a full open fan at one full turn and a full open material at two full turns, one to two ratio. I don't know. I've probably said that about 15 or 17 times in this video now. It's kind of important. And here we're going to start from one direction, starting going downward, and we're just going to turn it an eighth of a degree each time until we get to the side. We're going to spray that twice without turning. You see that? Uh, Dave actually hit it a third time there. That's fine, depending on how you do. We've got that 45 degree angle. He's going to contour around uh, from the side there just to make sure that we're getting in all those little cracks and crevices of your, your magazine release area and the magwell. And we're going to go all the way around and start over from a different direction. So here you can see he's getting that cracks and crevices again, 45 degree, kind of contouring around it and making sure that we get a good even coat. This is going to turn into a different project later. So this is going to have several coats of Cerakote on it. Uh, so we're just looking to get a good base layer here to provide that protection. I'll probably grab, yep, upper receiver is going to be next. Same thing. Now this is a cylindrical item, but when I personally spray this, it's 10 sides as well, just to make sure that we get a good even coating on those sides, especially with your deflector area, the forward assist area. Another important thing is Picatinny. So once we've got the Picatinny rail, and whether that's going to be on the actual rail itself, uh, maybe it's on a different item than an AR, you're going to want to spray that and make sure that you use opposite directions each time you hit it. That's what's going to help you not get that ghosting and that shadowing inside of there. So you're going to make sure to go uh, upward in one direction. There, Dave hit it from the downward direction the second time. And that's going to what's going to really help lay out a good even layer of Soco and Picatinny. That's important to pay attention to. Probably going to grab the rail next. Rails, super easy. Uh, I used to worry about spraying the inside of the rails when I very first started spraying myself. And I thought that it was going to be important for light spray to get inside. And I'll be honest with you, it's not. We spray, I don't know, a couple dozen rails a week now, if not close to a 50 and uh, you just do your octagon it's a cylindrical item make sure that you swap directions because if you're picatinny rail on top of each one and the spray is going to travel all the way through almost any rail even the the ones with minimal m-lock slots and get on the inside and you'll get plenty of protection that way so there we see we're going to start over in an opposite direction and just go eight times around again so I just want to say it one more time, uh, one to two ratio. Now nah, I'm kidding. Hey, uh, I do appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end. This is a pretty long video on basic spray. And if you got anything out of this at all, just anything, I would love if you hit that subscribe button at the bottom of the page and uh, like this video and stick around for some more of our videos. We've got a lot of really fun stuff out there. Thanks for joining us, guys. We really do appreciate it.